Hi, David Bow on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl's also nervous. You had a bit of shock last week, didn't you? Just a little bit. His, uh, his dad tuned in. To the show? Yeah. Um, and Carl's never told him that he actually speaks on the show. He just said, I just pressed the buttons, right? He's kept him from it. He used to do radio before and you never told him, did you? Mm. It's because of the little donkey incident. Yeah. When he went along, so well, it, was that the, the twat incident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's never told him since, but but they've promised not to listen, haven't they? Well, my dad, uh, my mum said to me, "Don't worry, don't be put off this week," because um, <laughs> you know I've, no. I've, I've, I've told him he can't listen. But I hear my dad in the background kind of going, "Oh, Alex," <laughs> so he might be listening. <laughs> so that's extra pressure. Yeah. Plus a camera crew in. <laughs> yeah. I know you well, don't like it, do you? Know, this is good training for MTV because then he can watch you on TV. I mean, what's he going to make of that? Oh. Yeah. Does he know you're bald? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't keep your hat on when you're with him and say, oh no, I'll just press the buttons. No, it's no. just, it's just, you know, it's like when when I was in any plays, I didn't tell him. No. Um, any sort of parents' evening, I never gave him the note. Uh -huh. <laughs> really? Yeah. So then what did the teachers think? You were just an orphan? No, just on an off chance, um, my mate's dad spoke to me dad once, I think, and sort of said, oh, you got to school to see how, you know, your kid's doing. Is that what you're talking about? So there's a parents' evening, so he, he went said to- one kid? He went to one, and that's when Mrs. Matthew said I'd never be a high flyer. <laughs> <laughs> How wrong was she? Yeah. Well, I think we should call Mrs. Matthews and make her eat her words. <laughs> well. <laughs> ah, she would turn on to MTV when, uh, I don't know, the, like their, their slamming session. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're going to go, that's young Pilkington. <laughs> He's bald, but it's definitely him. I, I, I recognise that Willie hat. <laughs> Do you know why people tinkle the- tink- the glasses before they have a drink. Why they tink? The verb to tink. I do know that, Carl. Is it about poison? It is. Here we are. What, would it make a different noise? Nope. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Go on, explain Why? it. Why? You explain it, Steve. No, 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 don't, Steve. You explain it, Carl. <laughs> Go on. Oh, I've started so I'll finish. Go on, Carl. Explain why they tink the glasses. Ages ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> One of my film reviews <laughs> years ago. Welcome to History Now. Now, ages ago, only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> Keep going, Carl. Keep I going. Like spirit and stuff. So yeah. they'd um, <laughs> it's, it's like businessmen, business businessmen. <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> this is getting to be cruel, cool, isn't it? This is amazing. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Why go did on. you open your mouth, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> what were you hoping was the best that could happen? Because you were trying to make me look stupid before with the planet, so I'm- Where is you now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, no, come on. Biz- bib- 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 man. <laughs> bib- man. no, business man with money, I've got to drink, I'm ching. Okay, so then, we'll so they'd, drink. So they'd, so they'd nip round to have a chat about the- whatever they're earning money with. <laughs> and they'd say, right, do you want a drink then? And yeah. Go, oh, yeah, that'd be alright. Yeah. So, yeah. rather than like, um, just pouring it out of a bottle into a glass and saying, there you go, it, it could be going, hang on a minute. Could be poisoning me here and try to like nick me business idea. Yeah. yeah. So what they do, it it sort of pour a bit of his drink into the other person's glass and you get that tink noise, and that's like like cheers, you know. No, no, no Carl, I, I just have a slight amendment there. I think what it was was you're absolutely right that they would then test each other's yeah. drinks to see that show that it wasn't poison. But over the years, that was reduced to just chinking the glasses by way of saying let's not actually bother going through the whole rigmarole. Mm. They just did the yeah. chinking of the glasses. Yeah, well, kind of yeah. yeah, that's 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 good. <sighs> It was exhausting though, wasn't it? I know. Was it worth it, do you think? Well, I, I like that, because people are carry that with them now. Mm. When they do that, they think, oh, that bloke's definitely not trying to poison me. Yeah. So yeah. The, the horrible thing is that now, when I do the glasses, I can laugh and go, they don't know I've poisoned them. <laughs> exactly. You should always do the pouring back and forth. <laughs> it's a shortcut, it's a slippery slope. You know, just be careful. No one's used that method since. <laughs> I know, because it was effective there, but you don't hear about that now. No. People using all kinds of elaborate methods to yeah. assassinate people, poisoning their wine. Yeah. yeah I think that was Rasputin. <laughs> <laughs> As I recall, they put some poison into his wine. Well, they didn't- they I didn't, didn't study an in history class, that's my memory of but it But if only they listened to Carl last week, chink the glasses. Always chink the glasses. That shows that they used to te test it, didn't they? Yeah. Pour a little bit from yours into mine, that means I'm not poisoning you. Yeah. But if you're thinking of, uh, murdering someone, you know, just, a, a dignitary. With a, with a gun. Yeah, but let's pop say- Pop a hanky you, over it. Just think about that. Just pop you? a hanky over <laughs> it. <laughs> I don't know, pop it inside an oven glove. 
Can you just wear that as you go to work with the hands? Or you know? sooty. Or, or one of those <laughs> big gladiator-style pointing <laughs> yeah. foam hands that you used to have <laughs> yeah. on gladiators. Yeah. That would be genius. Yeah. I'm just using this because I, I love the I love the. No gun in there, there, is there? No. no. Just a big finger. Check if you want. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we won't then if you said check. Right. That's, that's, that's oh, unlucky. Do you know, do you, have I ever told you my method, Carl, my genius method of um, assassinating someone? This is brilliant. This is the ultimate crime. Oh, is this the ice cube one? Have I told it to you before? No, but I know that. <laughs> What's that the ice one? cube one? When you, um... Shoot an ice bullet up. You get someone round. Rick, don't say it, don't reveal it, because it's my story to tell. Oh, Blabbing there's two. Out. I know two of them. Well, listen, let me tell you it and see if this is the one, right? This is genius. Right, you rent a room across the street from the person you want to kill, right? And then when their window's open one day, right, what you do is, what you've done is you've made an arrow from ice, okay? Mm. And then what you do is you, uh, you, you train, like, to become a, a brilliant marksman with a bow and arrow. It's an old one. It is brilliant, but it's, this is why it's classic. And then you shoot them with the arrow, Venom. it goes across the street, into their heart, kills them instantly, but what's brilliant is, the arrow, the murder weapon, it then melts, yeah. mm. dries out, there's yeah. no murder weapon. And yeah. then you can take apart An the bow. Another, and another one, Steve, they is to stab them, then, then. stab them, then take it out and walk away. No, Same, because no murder weapon. No but, there's no, no, but you've got to get into the building, this is the point, you're across the street. Right. The, you know, the only thing that could get what you is if someone saw you shooting an arrow at What about an arrow on a string? Arrow on a string, what are you talking about? <laughs> No, not an arrow on a string, because that's not going to work. What if the string broke as you were trying to loop? Good point, loop good point, good no, point. Rick, I, I no, the ice arrow is the I only way. The ice arrow is genius. the only perfect method it's, of assassination. An, that was on Columbo. Was it? But th there's another one. Do you know, like I was saying about the, uh... The murder weapon's irrelevant, Steve. What? The fact that it's a murder weapon that is irrelevant. No, because there's no fingerprints on it and stuff. You're having a laugh, Rick. I defy you to win. There's no win fingerprints on a you. bullet when it goes through your you head never... at 12,000 miles Yeah, but they can trace it to the right, the same gun, can't they? They can figure that Throw out. Throw the gun away! No, but they'll find the gun. They always find the gun. Burn I've it! Seen the... No, you can't burn a gun. Rick, my point is... Melt it. No, the point is it's fingerprints and stuff. Well, no, wipe it. Rick, you never Wear try gloves. kill someone. Wear gloves. They'll, they'll catch up with you. They'll always catch up Will with you. Will they? Oh, I won't then. The ice arrow is the only way. No, the ice arrow is the only way. I bet that was the one case that Columbo didn't solve. That, that was, that's one of them. The other one is, do you know I was saying the other week yeah. about the, uh, the drinks and you chink your glasses and stuff? Yeah. I weigh around that, put the poison in the ice cube, you quickly have a swig before it's melted. Before it's and melted. Go, that's alright, I can drink that, it's not dangerous. Just say, oh, I'm gonna I'll show you some pictures or something. Let the ice cube melt, the poison goes in the drink, you say, oh, knock that back. Yeah. You look thirsty, they'll have it, they'll die. Genius. That is good. Carl, you and I, man, we're like criminal masterminds. Yeah. All what right? happens when they find the poison in the body and go, well, he was at Carl's house drinking, it might have been... You'd, have, le <laughs> you'd have legged it. Oh, yeah. He'd have been off with his missus and, like, £30,000 or whatever it was. Yeah. Wouldn't mm. it? Yeah. So that's perfect as well, is <laughs> that it? That is a perfect crime, So, so, so it's, hold on, are all perfect crimes to do with ice? Pretty much. Hmm. Zero seven distractions, very nice. Yes, I approve of that, Carl. Good, good choice there. Now, Steve. Yes. Carl came round to my flat. Mm. Uh, it was Tuesday night, wasn't it? Nice place. Now, um, thanks. Now, last week after the show, I think you guys were in the time you were in the toilet. Right, Carl got out the lottery uh, ticket that he bought. He went. I'm feeling really confident tonight. Right. He's going, I, I was going, I laughed. And he went, no, no, seriously. He said, look at the numbers. And I looked at him and I think they were 4, 6, 8, 20, 36, 48, weren't they? He was going, I just got a feeling about those. I'm not sure. He went, although, you know, my girlfriend said that, you know, if, if I won the lottery, we'd probably split up because we like such different things, meaning she likes to travel and he doesn't. And so he said, he said, so what I said was, well, if I win, then I won't tell you. I'll just <laughs> treat you a little bit more. <laughs> Brilliant. That's brilliant logic. That mm. is great. Anyway. I'll look um, after her. I, I imagine you take care of her, yeah. Yeah, 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 you're a good guy. How would you do it then? You just, you just sneak little gifts in, slowly over many years. Yeah. You don't yeah. think she'd rumble the fact that you, like, don't work anymore and drive a Lamborghini? Well, I'd still do this, I think. What, just, like, as a kind of beard, as a cover story? Yeah, just So you'd out. pretend to come to work, but maybe off partying and stuff in the daytime. Yeah. Clever. Now, he didn't win. Okay. I phoned him up Saturday night, he went one number. <laughs> uh, one number. I think it was eight, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it was they all, there was a lot of eights on my piece of paper, weren't they? 
So I think it was either an eight or an eighteen or a forty-eight. Anyway, and, uh, and he was disappointed. He said, "Waste of time." I went, "Well," he said, "No, waste of time." He said, "I've worked it out." I went, "Go on." He went, "There are twenty-six letters in the alphabet." I went, "Yeah." He went, "Think how many words you can make out of them." He went, "There are forty-eight numbers on the lottery." I went, "Yeah, sixty million to one." He went, "Yeah, <laughs> not worth looked, it." I looked into that in the week, right? <laughs> and there's there's even less letters in the Welsh alphabet. They've only got 20, <laughs> and yet they've got loads of words as well. So even 20, the chances, if there was 20 numbers and you had to pick six winners, it'd still be really... Unlikely. Yeah. 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 You should be a mathematician. And anyway, so we got talking about it. We got talking about it. It was me, him and Jane right there. And, uh, and I told Jane that he said about, oh, if you won the lottery, you know, he didn't like travel. And she went, why do you like travelling? And uh, he went, well, I'm re I don't like planes. I don't. I'm really scared of planes and that. And she went, well, if you won the lottery, you could have a world cruise. And he went, no. She went, don't fancy. I went, no. He said, if you go on a world cruise, what do you do next year? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Genius. it's brilliant logic, Carl. Huh? It's, it's but you know, you know, on the world cruise, you don't actually see the whole world. I mean, you. And if you did, it's not like saying, "Well, I don't want to see that twice." <laughs> do you know it what is I mean? the world. It is the world. It's a lot. It's a lot to see. Mm. Um, and did, was, did it, it never? Sorry, did it never dawn on you before about the numbers and the lottery? Is this? The, have you been playing this for years and thinking that you had a good chance, that it was just like you and a handful of other people that were doing it? Just as much chance as everyone else. But then, when you actually sit down and think about sure. what you're doing. He's done it again this week. He went, I'm doing it one more time, and he showed me the numbers, and he went, they look a bit more healthy, don't they? <laughs> oh. What numbers are you going for this week? It's alright laughing, but we'll see you tonight. Yeah. Go on then. You know people, if they people do this and they win, if you take these out and people do these, you'll have to share it with someone. It's alright though, isn't it? Give them a chance. Tell them what, give, them, give people a clue. What numbers are you doing, Carl? No, I'm not, I'm not going to tell them at all. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you four. I've got, I've got five, nine, twelve, and twenty-six. <laughs> okay. You're not gonna give us the other two? No. Because that's, that's, that's a big difference, isn't it? What are the what? four's worth about eight grand in it? But if I give them the other two and it wins. Yeah. What are the, those four numbers again? Five, nine, twelve, twenty-six. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it. And I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no, even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on the, more on the right lines there. <laughs> is there is anyone who um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A-level maths that can bear... Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks... I was trying to... I, I know I was tr uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is... The, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but than any other indiv individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. You, I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to combine It's not, Carl. If there's a, a probability... Well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number of combinations that have never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up yeah. have happened, and they're just as likely or unlikely as any other combination, right? Yeah. It's just that you feel intuitively, right, that one, two, three, four, five, six are l is less likely than one, seven, twelve, thirty-four, sixty. You know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. <laughs> Play record. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what else has happened since we met? 2002. Um, gay marriages. That's, uh, that's kicked in. Mm. Thoughts? Mm, they've happened. Are yeah. they popular though? I mean... Well, amongst gay people who want to get married, they're very popular, I imagine. What's the point of it? You know, I suppose they want to feel that there's an equality. But is it just one of them things where they wanted it because they can't have it? You know uh, what I, mean? I think any excuse for a fancy dress. They like they like to dress up. They love a press tent. See, I just don't understand that. What's it? I mean, who gets whose name do they use? Whose surname do they go with? I don't know. There's a problem. Just creating problems. I always say that. Any problem solved is a new problem made. <laughs> <laughs> Gobbledygook. <laughs> oh, any that. problem solved is a new problem made. Yeah. 
like I said that time when I was in hospital and uh, you know I remember in the 80s everyone was going oh there's not enough hospital beds and all that when I was in hospital with uh, what's it kidney stones yeah um, loads of beds not enough pillars so that's the way it works it sorted out the bed problem <coughs> they give me a bed at night I was going I haven't got a pillar we had to go off and get one they brought it back it was still warm oh <laughs> <laughs> that has been just brilliant under, under a bed head so that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like you, you get all the beds, new problem. Where's the pillars? <laughs> Don't solve problems. Don't, Don't solve, solve problems. problems. Brilliant. What do you make of the um, this big problem in the church, not wanting uh, gay people to be priests? Does that concern you? No. No. <laughs> it's a problem if you're gay, and it's a problem if you go to church and you don't like gays. But I, I don't go to church, and I'm not gay. There's certain problems that just go over your head. If you were gay, Carl, what would you do? Well, I'd do what all gays do, I suppose. What the, what, what's that? Whatever it is they do. I'm just saying... Well, well you're going to just say... What if well, you I'm didn't... not gay, so I don't, I don't know. So, um, getting uh, gay marriage, um, would you uh, ever go through with that? What, if I was gay? Well... It's hard to answer, isn't it? How can I answer it if I'm not gay? I don't know what I'd do. Well, no, I might no, not okay. look like this. I'd look totally different if I was gay. Why? Even though it's me mum's what's it and me dad's jeers or whatever, it's still I'd still I'd look different <laughs> because gays do. You make more of an effort. Look at me. I won't survive as a gay man. Maybe that's why I'm not one. <laughs> right, Carl. Why? I'm going to give you a scenario though. Okay, I'm going to do a test. Um, would you rather? So you're not gay. Okay, this is a real you, right? Um, uh, someone put a gun to your head and goes, right, okay, Carl, you've either got a married little gay fella, there's a little fella here, he, he loves you, he's liked you for a long time, he goes, hello, Carl, you go, all right, mate, he's a lovely bloke, um, I think he's, he lives in Brighton, I think he's in advertising. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's got a sports car, he's, he's smart, he looks lovely, um, pink shirt, white suit, he's great, he's very popular, got tints, it always looks good, mm. right, Lo lovely tan. Um, he's about 38. What's his name? Uh, his name is Graham. Oh. Yeah. What's he expecting uh, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, And he goes, hello, Carl. And you go, all right, Graham. And, uh, and someone suddenly bursts in and goes, right, you've either got a marry Graham. He puts a gun to your head. He goes, right, you've either got a marry Graham, okay? You've got to tell all your family. Well, you... no, I'm not going to marry him, am I? What? Well, whoa, 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 get all the choices. Well, I know, I know one of the choices, and I'm not happy with that choice, so you go with whatever else. Well, no. Yeah, so what's the other option, Rick? Okay, so you marry you marry Graham and you yeah, do. I'll be marrying Graham. You do all the things in the bedroom. Why is that happening? Well, you're married now. You're married now, and he you wants to consummate the marriage. Even under you. marriage, you can't do that, can you? You can say, "Hang on a minute." Well, no. Well, I, don't, I don't know why you've married Graham. No, but you want him to be happy. Him. You want him to be happy. He's giving you a lovely house. Yeah, but I'd say, Graham, hang on a minute. You know the score. I'm not into this. No, I went he along with no. it because you didn't want a bullet in your head. No. <laughs> now, if you love me, will you stop doing that? <laughs> stop doing what? What are you doing in the bedroom? Well, no, just, uh, the, you know, you have a lovely life, you do your own thing, you do this, right? Podcast, do your little books and that, little, um, you know, uh, and, uh, Graham goes off, he does his, and he, he comes back, he goes, oh, I've had a day. He goes, what's the matter, Graham? And you go, you just sort of massage him, he's just like, you go, uh, oh. I'll go with the other option. Well, wait, Carl! So you're going, oh, God, oh, he used to have made you some pork chop. He goes, oh, you're a darling, right? It wouldn't work, though, because you're putting two people together who don't want to be together. Well, Graham wants to be with you. Yeah, Graham yeah, loves you. Relationship's two-way, isn't it? And I, yeah. I, and I don't, I mean, this is a made-up man, and I know I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> That's just homophobic. No, it's not. He's annoying me. Why? He's annoying yeah, Why is he annoying well, you? Well, just the way he looks after his body. Yeah. He's saying he's tanning it, he's having yeah. a massage, and I wouldn't be doing all that, so it wouldn't last, the relationship yeah, wouldn't yang, work. He's he's yang, yang. Well. No, it doesn't work. Opposites attract, okay? Not to and that point, it doesn't. He's good to you, uh, he's really, he, he, he's, oh god, he's, he's faithful, um... He's got a good job. He's got a really good job, um, you get invited to really nice parties. It's just him, I don't like him. Well, no, you he's he's no, that's a shame. He, he absolutely loves you. That happens, doesn't it? It happens that I remember right. being at school with a girl who really liked me, and I was yeah. like, "It's not going to happen, Sharon." No, no, no. It the, happen. the first, the first, the first. And that's day. Sharon, not Graham. <laughs> so the chances of me letting this Graham move in. <laughs> well, you've moved in with him, right? He's got a lovely, bigger, got a uh, six-bedroom house. Of course he is. And um, you, you move in with him, right? For the first day, you go, oh, "I'm not happy with this," because you're thinking, "Oh my God, it's a, oh God." 
first day in marriage, what's it gonna go? He goes off, he gives you a peck on the what's head. What's the option? Well, what's wait! the other choice? Well, you don't know! Yeah, okay. So he comes home, he goes, oh, he's bought you a lovely little ankle bracelet. Oh, with sweet, with Carl. Carl, Carl, love. Graham, I need a word. <laughs> <laughs> I go, what is it? What's, what's up, love? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? God, I'll be, look, I'll be Graham. Right, okay. I'll be Graham. Smart, you look tense. This is all, uh, it's, we're living a lie, yeah? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's just the alternative is so much worse. What's the alternative? Uh, well, what is the alternative, Rick? I think we're all waiting for that. Well, marry a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> marry a chimp? Yeah. Unless you either live with a chimp in a tree, or marry Graham, your family are going to get killed. They're going to, someone's going to shoot him, right? So you have to decide what you want to do. Do you want to go and live in a tree with a chimp and eat nothing but bananas and just live the chimp world? Okay. Yeah. Or woo Graham. You go down there, you're chatting to him, you're, in a, you're just in a, a club, right? You're there. But right? who's watching that I'm staying with Whoever Graham this all the evil, time? Person is right, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, well, where's he watching from? The, the evil, the evil person's going, right, he goes to that club, Saturday nights. Don't, don't bother going before midnight. He won't be there. Right? So you get there, you walk in there, it's 1am, and he goes, that's him over there, in the pink shirt dancing. Okay? Right, he, would, he wouldn't like me. <laughs> he would. You go, no, you go, well, this uh, is it, you've got to win him over. Look at you! Look at your lovely shaved head, hairy arms. Oh my god. I mean, you are more suited to the chimp, but now you'll go down a storm, right? You go down there, you've, you've got, you've got a little vest on, leather trousers. What would you say to Graham? You've got back. to go over You've no. cut out, you've got a bought another pair of trousers and you've cut out the back. Okay? There you go in. Your ass is showing. You've got, you've got a freshly shaved head. You've got a little white vest. Okay? Mm. Has he got all this on? Uh, no, he's got, uh, he's got like a little pink Ben Sherman, uh, white trousers and, uh, espadrilles. Right, I'd dance over. Yeah? I'd yeah. say, uh, you grey and we go, yeah. Oh, hello. Who are you? I'd say, never mind, you haven't seen a chimp about, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I just, I just, I just feel bad about Graham. I feel sorry for don't, Graham. Don't feel sorry for well, Graham. Well, he was a nice guy and he's, he absolutely. Just so badly treated. Took you into his home, it was going to give you everything and you just didn't appreciate. And was saving your family's life, and you just yeah. I but just... I went, I went for the other option. There's no point. I, all I'd be doing is letting Graham down. And as much as I didn't like him, I don't want to ruin his life. I don't know why you didn't like him. He was just not my type. He was a lovely you know, guy. He wasn't a lovely guy. You didn't give why him wasn't he a lovely time? guy? Just his, just his ways. You know, I mean, you, you, you bond with some people, you don't with others. It had nothing to do with him. You barely even had a conversation gay. with him. Yeah, but you click straight away with people, don't you? You know, when you meet someone, you go, yeah, they're all right. I'd, it wasn't going to work. If I was to go out with a gay man, Graham wouldn't be the one. Who would be? Who would be? Just someone who wasn't as in your face as him. Well, which just someone? What do you mean in your face? What? Just sort of, you know, just the way he was straight away. I wouldn't go to a club to meet someone like that. I wouldn't, because I don't like doing that as a straight man. So just because I'm gay, I don't suddenly get into house. Well, if you if you were going to be gay, would you? What gay man would you want to marry? Probably someone who you don't know is gay. I don't know what that means. Someone who's just quiet about it, you just get on with it. So if you were gay, you'd like a sort of straight man? No, because that's not going to work either, is it? That was my situation with Graham. But how do you, how do you know, if, how, how would you, if you were gay, why would you approach someone who didn't know was gay? Well, so if you're gay, the only gay life you can do is by going to a club where it's a racket at four in the morning and meeting no, someone. No, no. Right then, so that's but what I'm saying. I'm saying, who would be your ideal partner if you were gay? Who would you like? There'll be someone who I don't know who's gay, innit? I don't know what that means. What do you mean it was someone who you don't know Because gay? I wouldn't go out with someone who's really like, oh, hello, and all that, with the shirt open, the Why tan. not? What's because so because that's the equivalent of going out with a woman who's got knickers up her ass, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, just, it's the equivalent. It's the in-your-face woman and the in-your-face man. I don't want any of you. <laughs> well, who do you want? Well, who was your sort of guy? Not. Okay, well, just say what your sort of guy is, then. Do you want him to be sort of like a man's man, sort of goes, you know, Slap. He sort of like, he, when you go do something, you go, you, you dopey idiot, and he just sort of gives you. No, like, I don't want that. No, you want someone to go, oh, what's the matter with you? Do you want no, yourself better? You well, what do you want? What do you mean, I'm asking you what you oh, want. Petal. I don't yeah, want what do you want in a man? I'm asking you what the you want. The ones who are just normal, who just could talk, they'll go, all right, Carl, how's it going? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> right. Well, okay. What are we doing tonight? Watching Die Hard, if you want. 
<laughs> Go straight to bed after that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now he's straight in bed! Doesn't I love the fact he went from, like, not being sure to no. just, like, getting a, a man. But not great. It wouldn't be four in the morning. No. I'd be living my life as I am now. Right. But I'd, I'd be a gay man. Yeah, okay. So Because I'm, I'm me, aren't I? So yeah. that's not going to change. No. Why would it? No, you, so I'm just trying to... I'm, Carl, all we're trying to establish is what sort of guy you go for. Okay, we've settled that. If, um... Sorry about that, um... If any, uh... People feel sorry for Graham, sorry about that, but, um, that's... But Rick, listen, um, we often get a lot of email correspondence during sure. the show, Rick, uh, which I don't, I don't sort of pass on to you because I mean, you're busy, you're planning the show and stuff, sure, you've got sure, a lot of ideas, sure. you've got music and stuff to worry yeah. about. So I check the emails and we get a lot of response, a lot of people that obviously, uh, you know, want to give us feedback. Uh, just a sample one, um, from Richard Anderson. He's just uh, emailed us in here, Rick, because uh, he's been listening to the show. He says, Ricky, your show is appalling. Um, are you actually aware you're on the radio, or has someone just secretly stuck a microphone on you? That's from Richard Anderson. So, <laughs> yeah. that's, the, that's typical of the kind of feedback Rick we're getting <laughs> really? today. So, it's that um, good, is it? So, that's, that's the kind of, yeah, high positive praise that we're getting. So, uh, I'm, 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 I'm glad Anderson's listening, because I wanted him. Yeah, I was, no, I mean, I, I was gunning for him as a fan. I was worried that early, early on in our career. So, uh, I, uh, think, I think he's hooked now, though. But thanks, uh, Anders, for <laughs> <laughs> getting in touch. Um, Dick Anderson's been back in touch. Excellent. Um, I think so he's obviously- We've turned him round, well, he loves it now. He's been he? tuning in. He, he says, loves um, it now. He says, Ricky, thanks for a really forgettable two hours of radio. I think I'll spend the time next week counting my feet. That's from Richard Anderson. So, uh, we've turned him round. We've turned no, him round. do you know where the phrase counting my feet comes from? Well, in the olden days, right, and I'm talking ages ago, when you really loved something, yeah. you used to, as a, as a sign of respect, like say a radio show, mm. you'd count your feet. Mm. And mm. that's where that comes from, that's Carl. Where uh, I tell you, our number one fan has emailed again. I'm pleased to uh, announce Who? Richard Anderson, Dicky Anderson. He was in touch Anders last week. Back. Anders he is back. He loves this show. He's such a fan of the show. And this week he's emailed in. What actually is the point of your show? Is it to confuse, irritate, depress, or what? All of those things, Dicky. Thanks for uh, noticing. Oh, he loves this show. <laughs> he's such a fan. He's such a fan. He's because he's last week you remember, Carl. He emailed in to say that he'd rather spend his time counting his feet than listen to this show. Presumably, he's done that. Yeah. And he's just how many? Well, how many feet? Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's, he loves this he's show. Good, yeah. So uh, thanks, uh, R. A. Thanks for listening. See you later. Uh, what are you looking at? Well, I just looking at some of the emails, and if I can find it, I've got an absolute treat from you. Go on. Dickie Anderson. Is he- Anders, uh, he's emailed in Richard again. Anderson, our yeah. biggest fan. Biggest fan. He said, uh, dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in recently, only I've been busy watching a puddle evaporate. <laughs> Glad to hear you haven't tinkered with the show's winning formula by trying to introduce any quality into it. <laughs> That's from, uh, Richard Anderson. So, uh, good to have Dickie Anderson listening again. Oh, Cause God. he's- uh, he just keeps us on our toes, you know. Yeah. And, uh, good work, Rich. Thanks for that. I wonder what he looks like. Dickie Anderson? Yeah. I think he's a good looking guy. For some reason, I've always imagined him as being slightly older, with maybe a beard. Oh, no, you know I, what think, I, mean? like I think of, of him- I think of him sort of cords and now and sweater. Definitely cords. Gla I, I think he looks like, um, maybe the Proclaimers. Yeah, but right. again, with a beard or at least a moustache. Yeah. I don't know why I'm seeing some kind of facial and hair. And he's sort of like, he, he's sort of, uh, he likes the Cure and the Swiss Nap, but, uh, and, uh, he snarls at everything. He thinks everything's pure out. Yeah. I bet he yeah. prefers Radio 5. <laughs> Do you think Radio 5? Yeah. 5, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And yeah. four. I bet he's a real music snob as well. I bet it's like, there's certain bands, it's like rubbish. The Blazing Squad, rubbish. All pop music, rubbish. Britney Spears, rubbish. Is, is, is this defamation of character? Um, he slagged you off enough times, Rick, and the show. I don't know and if I'm only saying all... it's my opinion, exactly. I imagine, so, uh, Yeah, I mean, you know. don't know, I mean, you know, you, you could be a lovely guy. I'm getting, to be honest, I'm getting to like him. What I like about Richard is he, he's willing to say what he thinks. Well, it's not, it's more than that. Oh, it's a bit like Eminem. No, it's, no, it's, it's more than that. He actually hits on the truth too often yeah. for my liking. Yeah, well that's... I mean, this is a shoddy show with very, very little to offer. Is Anders listening? Is, uh, well, I'll tell you, Dickie Anderson. I've got, a, I've got an email from Richard Anderson, uh, Dickie Anderson. Go on. Uh, the Dick Machine, which- <laughs> <laughs> The Big Dick. The Big Dick, which- yeah. uh, Now, this is interesting. It's- I mean, I think we're wearing him down. Ricky, I think your show might be improving. Go on. That sense of despair and loneliness I normally feel when listening to your show doesn't seem so bad today. He's desensitized to it. Yeah, exactly. Always giving up. Him down. Always mm. just giving up. Yeah. 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 I mean, you listen to this long enough and your standards will drop. Um, but yeah, Dickie Anderson, he's a guy, he's, I'll be honest with you, he's not a big fan of the show. 
But he's, I, well, we're getting to winning round. He says, uh, dear Ricky, the more disappointing your show becomes, the more I seem to look forward to it. <laughs> now I see your face plastered across London. Is your show some sort of curse put on me by an old gypsy woman I've annoyed? <laughs> You know, good point, Dicky. But um, <laughs> Dickers. Uh, but but Randers, as I call him. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, it's, it, I hey, he can't listen now. I know what he's doing. Yeah. He's yeah. tucked him in. He's backing into the fire as we speak, and he <laughs> wants to, he wants to roast them until they spit. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Oh. Thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for, thanks it's, for it, it, it's a merry Christmas to you and happy New Year. Uh, and as you know, you got a lot to look forward to because our first hour is always the best. That's exactly so right. you're going to be loving it till three, cockers. <laughs> oh dear! Last uh, message from Anders. I suspect oh, Anders. for the day. Uh, he says, "I've just roasted my chestnuts over an open fire. It's a lot more enjoyable than listening to your show." He's he, oh, he's pretty it. snappy. He's Anders. Yeah, you know, he keeps yeah. on coming. You know. It's a shame that, um, you know, that we sort of couldn't sort of maybe meet up with him and try and persuade him that, you know, he should come over to our side rather than, you know. Come over to the side. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, come side, over to the know. side. I, I think we've got him though, because I mean, so? yeah, apparently they did this survey in, uh, in, uh, America. People who loved Howard Stern listened to an average of like an hour and a half a week, and people who hated him listened two and a half hours a week. Yeah, exactly. So I think he's probably m more faithful a listener <laughs> yes. than some of the people that quite like us. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? He's got to listen, it's a, I, I'm the same with some people, I've got to listen to things that I just think are awful, I, I can't. Mm. It, you mm. know, it's compulsive viewing. Mm. So, uh, mm. you know, I don't care if people listen to us because they hate us or like no, us. No, indeed. As long as I, I, hey, I should just point out because <laughs> it's Christmas time. We've had an email from Dicky Anderson. Whee! Oh, Dickers. Uh, yeah, RA is. Uh, well, he's, he's. He's. I suppose he's a long time listener. Yeah. Um, and he emails us most uh, most weeks. Uh, Ricky. If, as I suspect, I'm your only listener, I wouldn't bother with your show today as I've got to attend some family Christmas nonsense at Auntie Marion's house. <laughs> That's from Dickie Anderson and uh, he's, he's good because considering he hates the show and uh, everything we stand for, he does he does take the time to email every week. That we counts. That counts to advertisers. Yeah. I think we've got a lot like him. Mm. Oasis. Supersonic. Still good. Still as good as ever. Still good. On XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You'll be pleased, Rick. Go on. Ricky Anderson has, uh, emailed in. Dickers! Dickers. Danderson. Oh, yeah, what are you doing, uh, Dindo? He, he's, uh, he's probably our, uh, biggest fan. Diddler, you little diddler! <laughs> exactly. He has emailed in, as ever. Ricky, your show fascinates me. How do you maintain such levels of senseless drivel? <laughs> That's from, uh, from Randers. From Randy Anders, Little diddle dummers! <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thanks again, uh, um, Dudley. Yeah. Uh, well done. He's, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, nice I get a buzz. I, I, I was disappointed last week where he didn't, what, what ask him why he's, uh, didn't email Did, he us didn't, last. He didn't respond last week. No, it's a shame. Probably busy. Yeah. I don't believe he had something better to do. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. I can't believe that of anyone. No. When, uh, <laughs> well, you've got this sort of level. Exactly. Uh, intense chat. Um, you mentioned earlier when we had our, um, regular email from, uh, Dickie Anderson. Yeah. Randers, as I call him. Dandy son. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, you mentioned that, because we didn't get anything from him last week. We didn't no. get uh, anything from him last week. Anyway, uh, he's obviously listening, um, <laughs> uh, Rich, because he's emailed in to explain, uh, his absence. Dear Ricky, sorry for not tuning in last week, only I was in, uh, HMV returning the 14 copies of The Office I got for Christmas. <laughs> that's, uh, that's from Randers. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> He's explained himself. Oh, He's dear. excused himself. Oh, Anders, we should get him on one day. Yeah. Can I just say before we play a record that uh, we've had an email from Dickie Anderson. Dickers! <laughs> Richard oh, Anderson. Oh, Dickster, you Dicky Ducky <laughs> Dido. How oh, are yeah. If you're a new uh, listener, then you won't have uh, come across Richard before, but, but he loves he's, the our, show. he's our biggest fan. He's a bit of a guy, and he loves the show. He taped it and listens back to it four or five times. But he... the great thing about him is he's not afraid to offer a bit of constructive criticism. Oh, well. What's he said? What's he well, said? Well, all I'm going to say to you is he said, um, is it true that companies are now getting rid of hold music <laughs> and are instead using your show to irritate their customers while they're waiting on the phone? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, we'll try and we'll look into that, Dickie, but thanks for that. <laughs> Before we, uh, carry on with anything, I should just tell you, we're, we're on the subject of emails. There's one emailer we're always looking forward to hearing from. Dickers! Uh, Richie Anderson! Anderson. Dicky Ducky Doo! Richard Anderson, thanks for emailing. He's, and, uh, my, uh, he's my biggest fan. He's now. one of the biggest he fans. He absolutely loves me. But not afraid to offer some constructive criticism. Go on, that's what's the great thing about Dicky. And from Anders this week, he says, Ricky, I'm lazy, I talk nonsense, I'm badly organised, and I believe in ghosts. Can I have a job working on your show? <laughs>
Um, uh, possibly, uh, Anders. Maybe send in a CV. Or email a CV. He's put a little bit of all of us in that, hasn't exactly. he? <laughs> all right, ask him if he's a goggle-eyed freak, Steve. All right, calm down. Well, no, I didn't no, mean... There's no need to get insulted. No, I didn't necessarily no mean nasty. you, no did I? No need to get nasty. This is ludicrous. Yeah. So uh, obviously Richard Anderson. He's uh, he's emailed in his thoughts. Dicky Anders, <laughs> Anders, Anders, Ryan yeah. D. Anders. Yeah. <laughs> Dick's the, <laughs> Dick's Dick's the, the general. Dick Meister General. And he says there's something making. Have we got it clear? There's something, he says, there's something making strange yelping noises in the thicket at the end of my garden. Shall I go and prod it to see if it's Carl? <laughs> Let me just yeah. tell you what, uh, what Dick has said. Uh, yeah. Yeah. he's here, Richard Anderson, he also said, P.S. The show's still rubbish without Carl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair, still right? rubbish, <laughs> still rubbish without Carl. Now, is that a compliment? It's still rubbish without Carl. Which suggests he thought it might be better with, without Carl? No, I think he's, he means it's equally rubbish. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. Nothing Thanks. Changes. Thanks, Dickers. Yeah, he's yeah, nothing. Dick <laughs> It's interesting. I mean, I, I don't think um, our number one fan, Dickie Anderson, Richard Anders, was uh, on the on the panel. Although he here has emailed in, he's Go got on, a couple oh, of brilliant. thoughts as to maybe why we. What we is Dickers doing, man? Uh, Dickers says, "Commiserations on not winning a Sony. I can't believe you didn't win." Naturally. Oh. I mean, apart from your show's obvious lack of quality and effort, having a monkey for a producer, offering the biggest load of tat as competition prizes, <laughs> saying hairy Chinese kid 48 times every show, <laughs> rockbusters, not bothering to turn up for weeks on end, only having three listeners, introducing the comedy characters Camp David Har Harry Fook, which I think he spelt wrong there, yeah. Stephen Merchant, I'm not a character. <laughs> Apart from insulting every race, religion, and sexual orientation, bickering like schoolgirls, we and haven't done everyone misery. yet. We have not insulted everyone yet. Well, there's loads to go. Despite the fact you generally bring misery into the lives of anyone who listens, I thought you were surefire winners. Better luck next year. Well, I mean, a couple of constructive, you know, criticisms there, but generally, I no. still can't nail it. Was he on the panel? Well, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, he's a fan, so. Yeah. Well, no, he, he's clearly a fan. I mean, yeah. <laughs> he, lo he obviously loves the show. He's because he's. D I mean, now I know I shouldn't, uh, but I met Carl in the week again. I, I told you you shouldn't do I this. Know. You know, you but then when the he weekend. starts, he starts saying things like, "Oh, is this loud with the people?" I go, no, "Save it, save it," and we just sit there. And I'm scared to talk in case he comes. Up. But um, you did tell me a couple of little things, didn't you? True stories that you know that, that I mean I enjoy. Can you tell um, Steve about the doctor? Right. Oh God. Um, What's what, what, is this something that happened to a friend of yours, or is this? Uh, no, no, I read about it. You read about it, okay. Um. There's this little lad, right? Okay. First of all, it's it's years ago, right? When right, they didn't have times. they didn't have decent doctors in like every town and that. Yeah. And uh, this little kid is dead ill, right? Yeah. And the local doctor. <laughs> well, there's a phone call involved, so I don't yeah, really no, well, get the impression it. that it's like medieval, medieval times. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but I, I didn't say that. I just said it's years ago. Go on so then. this kid's ill, right? Yeah. And he's uh, he's lying in the bed and. Uh, He's, mm. he's all like, all going funny colour and that. Yeah. And uh, and his mum says, I'm gonna get the local doctor around. The local doctor comes round and uh, he says, oh, he says, I don't know, I don't know what's up with him. He said, um, he said, leave it with me. Leave it with me? He well, said, the doctor uh, said that. I'll have a, yeah, he said, I'll, um, I'll, I'll phone up uh, a top doctor. Okay. Who was in America or somewhere like that. Yeah. And, uh, so he goes to the phone in his office and he calls America and because it's years ago the phone line isn't that good, it's all crackly and that, right? Mm, yeah. So he's talking to the doctor and he's saying, I've got this kid, he's a funny colour and uh, you know, he, he's really weak and that. I don't yeah. know <laughs> he's not him. giving him much to go on. <laughs> right? Sure. So, uh, so the American doctor, right? Yeah. He goes, yeah, what you wanna do? And it's all breaking up, right? Yeah. He goes, what you gotta do, you gotta, uh, it's all breaking up. You've got to give him some, uh, parrot's blood, right? Some parrot's blood? Well, that's what he thought he said, but the line was really bad. Yeah. He meant parent's blood, but he, he heard that he said parrot's blood. He oh said, right, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, leave I, it with I me. I can see where this is going. He goes, goes to, uh, you know, a pet shop. Yeah. <laughs> he says, give us like half a dozen parrots. Sure. Takes them round to the kid's house. Takes the blood from the parrots, puts it into the kid. Kid's fine. <laughs> the kid's fine. <laughs> I've it, never. It worked. <laughs> such a load of shite <laughs> in my life. <laughs> I've never heard <laughs> such twaddle, such uh, just made up, enhanced, exaggerated. <laughs> Oh, in my a life. load of old rubbish. Carl. I mean, when he told me this, he said the doctor said, "What do I do?" And the doctor on the other end said, "Give him some blood." And the doctor went, "Where do I get blood from?" <laughs>
<laughs> so hang on, wait, I just need to- I just need to clarify- from, from his- give him some parents' blood. <laughs> give him some parents' blood. <laughs> give him some parents' some- some parents' blood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I- um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> But hang on, I just need to know where you <laughs> Sorry, read this. Carl. Where was this? Where did I you read this? I stitched you up. You know when he said- he said, so do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. He went, do you believe it? I went, tell it to Steve. <laughs> Carl. But where did you read it? it? That- that was on the internet. What, about where is illnesses. it on the internet? Where, I'm what, always what looking at stuff. I was looking at stuff this morning because of um, because <laughs> of Yora Geller last night. <laughs> eating uh, eating all that funny food and that, and also uh, they all got a bit scared last night, didn't they, with a with a snake? Hmm. I didn't see that. Is this um, I'm a celebrity? Get me out. Of yeah, me? yeah. He got all worried about a snake getting on the uh, sort of wandering about in between the sleeping bags and stuff. Yeah, and. Um, they were all scared, and it is so Leave easy. it with me! Sorry, the doctor says, leave it with me. <laughs> leave um, it with me. <laughs> yeah! Ah, uh, leave it with me! Well, they were all scared, because there's a snake, and it's so easy to find stuff out. Before they- before they- where are they? Where is this jungle? <laughs> Australia, right. I think. Right, before they went, give it half an hour on the internet, <laughs> I found out with snakes, you don't need to worry, okay. right? Um, they're deaf, they haven't got any ears. Right. So as long as you- you're really quiet, Creep it'll, around, it'll yeah. probably leave you alone. Yep. And also, they don't have eyelids. Uh huh. Um, so they were suggesting if one's coming towards you, just like kick sand in its eyes. Because <laughs> yeah. it can't blink and it leaves it a bit like annoyed yeah. and it wanders off. But they didn't uh. do any research before they went. Yeah. And that's. that's you're, it's, you're, I think your knowledge would hold you in good stead. I don't think you need to know any more than you know. This doctor, I mean, we <laughs> should find out who he is, really, and if he's still practicing, because it, it worries me a little bit. That he, you know, mm. he did that. Also, I mean, he thinks he's got away with it, but how could he be sure those parrots wouldn't talk? True, true. Do you know yeah, what I mean? There yeah, were six yeah. of them, they probably got together and they pro they probably put it on the internet. I mean, it, I, I feel that that story, Carl, <laughs> it, it asks more questions than it answers. <laughs> yeah! Really. Like most of your stories. Yeah, that's the problem. I always, feel them, I always feel like I need a little bit more information. Like, yeah. did the parrot boy continue to live? <laughs> yeah. You know, to a ripe old age, or did he yeah. die weeks later <laughs> after this charlatan doctor who was yeah. going around, you know, spurious well, Did he break right. his nose trying to crack a big nut? Mm. No, I, th I think he's, uh, he was alright. He, he lived to a. See, a I'd have shouted, if I was that doctor, I'd have shouted. Back down the phone. Are you sure you said parrot's blood? Yeah. You parrots, sure it was parrot's no, blood? Listen, I, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not the best doctor in the world, but d d did you say parrot's blood? <laughs> yeah, but what you're forgetting is you're going back to the time where, like, they used leeches to do, like, No, 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 we're going back to the late 70s if there's a phone <laughs> call to America direct. <laughs> Come on, Carl, they weren't calling America, like, in the medieval times or, or in the Victorian age. Come on, think about it, Carl. Yeah. You know, it's, this has got to be like the, the like, you know, 30s or 40s, <laughs> the earliest. <laughs> you know? Right. I'm intrigued to know where this is. I think there's someone on the on the web who's just putting information on there to lead you astray. Yeah. I don't, cause you're the only person who finds this stuff. Other people are using this to write what were, thesis. What were you looking at that then? What were you, what were you I'm looking always, I always look at weird stuff. What were yeah. you looking for? But what do you type in the search engine to find what parrot you, what, blood stories? What were you looking for? There was this woman with a weird head. <laughs> Why were you looking for that? What were you doing? Just because I'd heard about it. I'd heard, like, someone talking about it on another station. Right. right. About this woman with a- with a funny head. Right. <laughs> I love the fact- I love the fact you're intrigued with these things. You go in the basement of Waterstones or Dylan's or somewhere and there's these- there's these medical books that you're loving, mate. Yeah, well, this is free on the internet, isn't it? <laughs> it's all there. Yeah. So what do you typed in? Weird head woman or- <laughs> <laughs> Lady with head. <laughs> yeah. Weird, weird, weird people or something I put in. Sure. Yeah. Did, you, did you come up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seven thousand uh, hits, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> During that track, I'm I'm chilling out. I'm loving it, aren't I? Carl goes, "Do you know how baguettes came about?" <laughs> Do you know how baguettes come about? I went, go on, and Steve went, no, save it. Wait a minute, though, I'm thinking, Rick, people are gonna be desperate to know the answer to that. Why don't we play some uh, ads and some music and stuff? It's like a cliffhanger. Exactly. How did ba baguettes come about? Whatever he says is gonna be good, Stay isn't tuned it? to XFM to find out. The reason, the reason <laughs> you became king of the universe, of course, is because of your fascinating French bread anecdote. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah what come on, the then. What, how, uh, how did baguettes come about? If this is gonna be someone uh, cooked a loaf a bit wrong and said, oh, I can still make a sandwich out of it, <laughs> I'm gonna hit you. Is that it? No, 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 no. Go on, then. Um, right. Napoleon, when he was at war and that with, um, Russia, uh -huh. 
1812, yeah. Yeah, all these soldiers were like, you know, not used to the cold weather and that. <laughs> so they said, take, take some clothes in your bag with you because it's going to be, uh, it's gonna be Chilly. nippy, nippy yeah. out there. So um, they put all the clothes in the bag. Sure. Didn't they were told, thought, oh, it's Napoleon for Christ's sake. No I'm room for any food. No room for You're food. joking. So, um, Could they make some sort of like sandwich? <laughs> no, it won't fit because I've got all the clothes. You have to take extra yeah. gear. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, um, anyway. I can see where this is going. <laughs> so, <laughs> is there a baguette shaped gap <laughs> left in their holdall? They thought, let's make some bread that you can fit down your trouser leg. What? That's not true! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not oh, your leg! I read it in Euston train station. I was waiting to go back to Manchester. Where did you read these? It scrawled was... on the wall in graffiti. No, no, no. Yeah. Do you know the upper... Was it also <laughs> meet me here for cock fun at 12 o'clock? <laughs> the upper cross sandwich <laughs> shop, Euston station. It's on the wall. What do you mean it's on the wall? Do you know how it says like, <laughs> sail on at Dixon's, whatever? Yeah. Next to that, there was like a bit of information. Once you've read the stuff on Dixon, I get information. There was there was a big thing about the history of the baguette. I read <laughs> I it and I thought, oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> we got we got to make a sandwich we can spit down our trouser leg. <sighs> But how can you march and fight with a huge piece of bread down your train? Oh, that would be intimidating. You see them coming, you go, sacre bleu, look at the <laughs> yeah. size of them. They're, they're, they're big fellas. Well, I, I, I can't help but feel that could be a practical joke at your expense. Yeah. You wouldn't do that. Well, the Earl of do Sandwich... Do you ever question anything the, you read? If it's that, printed up, is that, yeah. like, fact for you, then? Well, it's not funny. I mean, if they were trying to be funny, it's like, oof. it's not, is it? So it's information. Have you heard us? Things sometimes the, the, want to no, be funny that's, when that's, they're not. That's exactly what happened with the sandwich. The Earl of Sandwich wanted somebody who could fit down his pants. <laughs> And uh, it was a, those triangle cut sandwiches wrapped in cling film were perfect. Uh, um, you might be right. You might be right. I am. Because the Cornish pasty, so they could drop it down the mine, isn't it? Is it? They, yeah, they wrapped it up in. A, they wrapped up like meat and vegetables in pastry, and they sort of crimped it, and it was like a little. And they dropped it down the mine, so. Yeah, that's how that came about. And bagels were originally made so that people could play hoopla, <laughs> but then <laughs> eat afterwards. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> That is true, Carl. <laughs> well, anyway. Like call my bluff. Is yeah. All true? Yeah. They're well, all true. They're all true. Yeah. Yeah. Tell your well, kids that when you have them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if they're still alive in a million years. <laughs> well, go ahead. it might be true. Can someone confirm um, that baguette fact that it was so Napoleon could stick it down Not him. his trousers? Not him, his, his soldiers. Men. His men. Yeah. Fascinating information. Fascinating bread information, Carl. Radio Ed. Yeah, now this is my song for the lovers. It's a beautiful track. It's let down uh, off OK Computer. It's one of my favourite radio host tracks. It's lovely. Right, set the tape going now if you want to tape yeah. you know, these songs. Avalanches. Frontier psychiatrist. Absolutely. Well, we've had lots of emails. Um, people, obviously, we inflamed uh, and provoked well, about actually, the, the, the Cornish it. pasty. Um, I've got a couple of amendments to that. The, the crusty bit, you know, is actually as a handle, because obviously the miners had dirty hands, and they'd eat the, all the stuff in the pasty, and they'd be left with this sort of crust, and they could throw that away. Mm -hmm. Also, someone told us that at one end was a, like apple, mm -hmm. so you have a little sweet as well. A little dessert. So, there you go. You noticed how, like... Over the years we've been doing this, you know, way mm. back when we started XFM, no one ever contributes when we ask about the music, no. when we ask about hip hop, no. or their, you know, opinions on that, anything no. important. No. But start talking about pasties. Yeah, we've had about five phone calls. Yeah, and like, someone yeah. someone phoned up to confirm. So they used to work for Upper Crust, and uh, basically Carl got all excited. So uh, so it is true. She went, well, I don't know if it's true. I've I've read the same sign you yeah. did, Carl. Interestingly, it, there's an email here that says, uh, which basically offers a history of the baguette, yeah. and uh, talks about after the revolution, the government decreed that all of France must eat the same bread, and it was up to the bakers to bake this bread of equality, yeah. um, and then Napoleon kind of um, made sure it was particular, he kind of set in... in yeah, in, in, obviously on the bread you can eat anything you find in the garden, mm. frogs, snails, bits of horse, but squid. The interesting, th the interesting thing is, Rick, that there's no mention of sticking it down your trousers whilst going to war. The French have tried to keep that secret for <laughs> over a hundred years, no, Steve. Only upper crust, people. Yeah, yeah, to, uh, nearly, nearly yeah, 200 years, that is a top secret. Somehow Euston Station upper crust got hold of a document, <laughs> left behind in an old sea chest, possibly Napoleon's, could have been Josephine's. Unfortunately, jotted it down. He's kicking himself now. Oh, I cannot believe I left a note. <laughs> if he talked like that. He did. 
He did, he did that. Yeah, yeah he talked English, exactly. but in a very funny <laughs> French exactly. accent. Do you remember, it's... there was one thing that, talking about funny French accents, you remember, you remember Allo Allo? Yeah. Remember, it was on about five o'clock in the afternoon, but they still made, because it was a funny Frenchman, it was that, that English guy who was posing as a French police yeah. officer. it's very complicated He would often walk by, and he, I remember there was one where he said, uh, I was pissing by the door when I heard the shit. Oh, yeah. Now, that's passing by the door. That. I'm allowed passing to say that. by the door when I heard a shot. That's what he's saying. I'm allowed yeah. to say that at two o'clock because that I'm just saying, I'm talking in a French accent. Yeah. I was pissing by the door when I heard a shit. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Because I'm speaking French. Do you, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Radio 2 indeed. And, uh, you heard the uh, Pogues, Fairy Tale of New York. One of the best Christmas songs ever. I think the best Christmas song ever and one of the best songs Absolutely. ever. Absolutely. No, there's no question. Uh, it's brilliant. Do you like that, Carl? It's alright, yeah. It's good. Yeah. Enjoying yourself, Carl? Uh, what, being here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's alright. I mean, we're getting looked after and that. I can't believe, like, you know, the amount of food and that we've got here. It's mental. Yeah, mince pies, fruit, it's all going on. Just like, like a little Arby's festival going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where you take the pineapple chunks well, for an old lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's going alright. I mean, I've been, been sort of listening to Radio 2, you know, the last few weeks. Sure. Enjoying it and that and sort of, you know, making sure we get the show right. Yeah. You know what I mean? We want it to fit into everybody else's shows and that. Oh, yeah. yeah. This yeah, fits yeah. into, uh, everyone else's show. Right, this I've is. been thinking. Oh, yeah, this is, this is great, this <laughs> show. This right. is perfect. Listen again, of course, on bbc.co.uk forward slash radio 2. But, <laughs> but something that, uh, Wogan does, right, on breakfast, Terry yeah. Wogan, yeah. right, he does this little thing called, uh, Thought of the Day. Yeah. And I thought we could carry it on. I've, I've like a little. What, little, you're gonna do it? Just, just have a little thought. Well, if you ever have a little thought, please tell us and we'll put it up on the website. Oh. Well, you, you, you want to do, you want to do thought for the day? Yeah. It's a big, it's a big feature, isn't it? It's, does it in the Have you got one? Have you got a thought for the day you want to do or are you just gonna, when I put, uh, uh, uh. Well. All right, well, okay, well, no, all right, well, let's have a little jingle. Have a little jingle. Okay, I don't know what the jingle is. I, I, I no, but uh, just make something okay. up. You listen to Radio 2, the Ricky Gervais show with Thought for the Day with Carl Pilkington. Right, well, uh, thanks for having me, right? Um, <laughs> Brilliant. I'd just like to say, you know, it's, it's Christmas time. Um, just, you know, cheer someone up, have a laugh with them, make the day and that. So, happy Christmas. That's it. That's well, your thought for the uh, day. It's, it's, you don't need to mess about, <laughs> you know what I mean? Just if you can do that today. Yeah, I'll add that. If, if you can, if you can do that today, cheer someone up. Right. I mean, this quite sweet. Carl is quite sweet. You know, yeah. I, I think I give him, I don't know, not child rights, because children are a lot more intelligent than Carl. Um, I don't know, sort of, I suppose animal rights? No, animal, mm. no. Because they're, 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 they're no, no, what is, is, well, I mean, you see, the thing is, Wogan normally has on, uh, um, a priest or a rabbi or a thinker, not normally the modern equivalent of, you know, Frankenstein's monster. Yeah, so, no, but, but I've, I've been busy, I, mean, I haven't got time to, they sort of drag it out, they have, they have like a fable or something, don't they? Uh, cut out all that, right? <laughs> because, you know, they've got a lot of time on their hands when they're- <laughs> Vickers! Yeah, just, you know, when they're, when they're in their house. Well, not Christmas, it's their busy time as well, I would have thought, Christmas, Vickers. Do you uh, think they only work Sundays? Well, yeah, again, you know, I'm always a bit worried because I don't want to have a go on that, but, you know, they've got, they, they do all right for themselves, they've got, they get given that house to live in and that. <laughs> no, they do, they, well, it's the house of God, they don't, they don't no, actually no, no, get no, to no. keep no, it. No, 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 it's not the house of God, they live next door to the house of God. Right. That's the house of the vicar, they live, they usually live, uh, joined the up. The house of Barrett. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the house of Fraser. Yeah. No, the vicar lives in a little vicar's house, yeah. little vicarage, and that's usually joined on to the house of God. Yeah. You don't, don't get those addresses mixed up. He doesn't get all... God's mail, and he's going, ooh, for you again. <laughs> Stevie Wonder on Radio 2, I wish Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. You wish you were Stevie Wonder. I'd love you? to be Stevie Wonder. He's great, yeah. isn't he? Well, uh, Carl has started offending everyone, as Brilliant. we thought. But we've got to explain, Carl does, I mean, he honestly means no harm. He no. does these things what, that- What, bit? What? What for said? Well, um, this is from Reverend, uh, uh, Gwyn Owen from Stockwood. Yeah. A vicar, okay. When I'm tired of being a vicar and working one day a week, maybe I'll become a DJ and do bugger all a week. <laughs> and that's a vicar swearing. <laughs> yeah, you made a vicar swear! That's how infuriating well, you minute, are! <laughs> Why does he listen to the radio if he's busy? <laughs> he's done you, Reverend. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear! Well listen, you know, we're chatting about presents and all that, and before my little, my little thought of the day about- It was a little thought. Just, you know, cheer someone up if you can. Brilliant. Right? I mean, it's a nice sentiment, but it's- yeah, okay, go on. 
Well, there's a, there's an old woman, right, who lives and next door. You? Who lives next door to my mum and dad, right? And this this is what I mean about you know the old people. They might not have that many people cheering them up this time of year. Um, so you know if you can get them a little gift and that, because what happened was this old woman living next door to my mum and dad. How old were you? Uh, this this was only about two years ago. Okay. Right. And um, you know I think her son's left home, doesn't keep in touch. You know, doesn't even phone her. I don't think and that. Right. Quite sad. <laughs> And uh, I, I thought I'll give her a bit of my time, have a chat with her, try and cheer her up and stuff. And uh, I said, "All right, how's it going?" She said, "Yeah, not bad. I, I need a, a new, you know, dishwasher." Right? I was going, "Yeah, yeah." And she was saying, "But I don't get a chance to get out these days. You know, I can't get about like I did." And uh, and all that. I'm going, "Yeah, it's bad that." Anyway, I go to like one of those big superstores where they sell all electrical stuff and that. Right? I'm in there. I think, "Oh, I'll get her a little catalogue so she can have a look." Right? Got back, gave her that. I said, "There you go." Whilst I was in the superstore, got your little catalogue so you can have a look at dishwashers and that. She's over the moon. She still goes on about it. It was years ago. What that you got her a catalogue? I got her a catalogue. Oh, I thought you said you were going to buy her a dishwasher. No, no, just just the catalogue and that. Oh, that but the, y y your life is sort of like just bittersweet tragedy. That's what I'm saying. It's like something from Shameless. I know, but it, it is though because you've got in the street and there's there's people knocking around with um. Big heads and webbed hands and webbed feet. That that I mean that must have. Been well, she she's pretty weird. Anyway, this old woman because she she was. And that's me. coming from you. No, no. Well, after I got the catalogue and that, she opened up a bit and she was saying how, you know, she's she's a bit odd anyway because she woke up one morning with blood for, sort of falling on her head, from a, a, a dead rabbit hanging over her. <laughs> so I mean, she's she's a nice. What are you nice talking? What are you talking about? No, that's that's what she went on to. She sort of opened up a bit. And what said, oh. street? Wh what street were you born in? Where is this place? Is it no, Elm no. Street that you live on? <laughs> she, just, she just said a man was a witch or something. So it was like oh, oh that, like normal. Like, <laughs> you said, <laughs> like, like it's a normal. Witch. Just 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 a bit odd, isn't it? But you know, I mean, but but talking about like where I live and all that, right? Uh, one story that I've, I've told you before, and everyone's always like that didn't happen, right? Just a couple of hours is sort of down from where I lived. There was this family. <laughs> who, uh, had horse in their house. <laughs> <laughs> they what? They had a, they had like a horse in their house. I, I'd been out with my dad, right, and I drove back into the, uh, my dad was driving, he, he went back into the avenue, sort of went down to the bottom to turn round to get back to our house. Sort just via the OK Corral? Just sort yeah. of did a little glance and I saw this, this horse being led in. <laughs> what are you talking about? He had a horse, horse in there and stuff. Well, I just, have you, have you been back to visit your... Your uh, street. Don't really. There's no. Why did they have a horse in the, in the house? I don't understand. I don't know. I think they they must have nicked it or something like that. It was a council estate in Manchester, and you know I, I've told that story. They've just been doing a bit of wrestling. Uh, yeah, they they they, they, they uh, made the horse go in with a hoodie, and they said, "Don't cause suspicion. Yeah. Just like you know, we just pretend it's our long lost brother. No, just, just pretend we're rehearsing a panto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's no. two blokes. It's just two blokes in this horse. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. The little old lady who gave her a catalogue. That's yeah, very sweet. You see that? Mean. And it's that just a little thought. That's your thought for the day, isn't it? That's what just I'm cheer someone up. So nip down to Argus. There's free ones stacked up. Go and hand them out to the elderly. They love it. The Jayhawks on Radio Two. Bad, the bad time is it? I think it's called bad time. So we were so distracted by all the questions that come well, in. These for are Carl. great. There's thank you so much for emailing and texting. That they're brilliant. Um, uh, here's one uh, from Reverend Rachel Harrison. I'm also a vicar, and I'm making mince pies. We know our demographic now. We got a load of vicars listening. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, they're good at spreading the word and that, aren't they? You know, tell people about the show and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and also mincemeat, clearly. Oh. So, uh, yeah, all vicars listening, spread the word. Tell them about Carl and have a great time tomorrow. It's your special day. Uh, although Carl doesn't, Carl sort of does. Ca does Carl go against creationism or for it? I don't know. What do you mean? Would he have evolved or did something make it? All I, I'll I, say to the would would God have bothered to? Is that? <laughs> Is that in God's image? <laughs> I mean, that's surely the most blasphemous no, thing you could no, say. Bod made him in his yeah, image. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I he's made this. in the image of Bod. <laughs> is is he the one who sort of decided? Who? That? God. Are you talking about God or Bod? Uh, God and that. Okay. I, is he the one who decided that you know <coughs> we should move out of the water and walk on land? Did he decide that, or once once he made the little egg, did he sort of go <laughs> run free? <laughs> Do, do I don't know where we are. <laughs> I don't know what part of the. <laughs> if could I just say, if uh, there are any um, vicars out there, could Carl come and do a, uh, a sermon one day? 
I mean, we'll pay, we'll do, we'll do a big donation to a, to your roof, but can Carl just talk to five minutes to a, I mean, a really sort of, I'd like an upper middle class educated parish somewhere, and Carl just comes and talks for ten minutes. The and only time that a congregation anywhere has heckled the person doing <laughs> no, it. No, Get yeah. off! Yeah, then they're chasing to the castle, carrying pickaxe <laughs> handles. Flaming torches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Carl, we have just had, uh, a communique from Gillian Oliver, who's the communications uh, director for the Church of England, yeah. okay, she wants to take you up on your offer. Um, she would like to take uh, you uh, to Manchester and let you give a sermon. About what? Well, th th don't think that's a matter. She's, she's the, the in charge of the press and communications for the Church of England, and she wants. Oh, you've got to do this, Carl, for my sake. I, I, I'll, I'll go to church if uh, you do this. I've, I've been, I didn't really like it. I had to go once to what church. Do you mean? Um, it was years ago when I was a kid and I swore, right? My mate Jamie said, right, if you don't come with me to church, because he was Catholic, he had to go. Right? <laughs> so if you don't, if you don't come with me now, I'm going to tell your mum that you swore. Like, <laughs> That's how like, to get oh. people to church. <laughs> so I went, right? Yeah. Didn't enjoy it. Got any, I sort of got kicked out in the end because I was bouncing my tennis ball in the, in the <laughs> aisle and it rolled down. I, well I better tell uh, Gillian Oliver that that may happen again. Yes. That's the, if you don't take your yo-yo or your Nintendo, you've got to do it. I'm gonna make sure, oh we want a campaign, please uh, email us if you want uh, uh Carl oh, oh. to do a sermon. And I, I, I mean, I'm sure we can film this and put it on the web for you to see. Oh please do it.